Hi, I'm Juliet. Gary Oldman directed a music video for a Jewish hip-hop band, which he shot entirely on cell phones. He asked me to direct the making of, and when I saw the footage that I'd gotten, I realized I had a unique perspective into Gary's creative process. I approached him and asked if it could develop into a short documentary film. In these interviews, I'm talking to other artists who I admire about their creative process, and like Take Flight, hopefully shedding some light and showing them a little bit differently than they've been seen. Tell me a little bit about your process. How did you become an actor? Uh, my earliest memory, I grew up in the Dakotas, both of them, north and south. Uh, I was four years old, and my grandfather took me to a Saturday movie called Goodbye, My Lady. And I spent most of the time watching him watch it. And it's an indelible memory. And from then on, I decided that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that, and I never changed my mind. So what was it in his expression that made you feel like that's what you wanted to do? Uh, it wasn't just that he was watching. He was watching with such a sense of being transported. It was, he was totally involved. And I remember very specifically going back and forth, like between the film and him, going, wow, that has the most amazing effect. And I thought, I want to have that kind of effect on people. How do you prep for a role? With something like Lost, for example, when I first started on the show, I land in Hawaii, and the person who's picking me up says, boy, I bet you're glad to get out of L.A. I say, why? He says, because there is a massive power blackout. They think it's terrorists. This was not long after 9-11. And I instantly freaked. It said, I've, I've got to get back on the plane. I have to go back home. I have to be with my kids. And about that time, my phone rings, and it's our friends saying it was a power blackout. The kids are right here, they're fine, everybody's okay, go do your work. The very next morning at 5 a.m. I have to start shooting the scene where my character learns that my wife is alive oh. for the first time in a year since that we've been separated. So this whole feeling of being separated and feeling helpless and there's nothing you can do um, in a strange and foreign place was just there and available. And I think that happens all the time. I think we live a very serendipitous life as actors, but we're also always looking for it. You know, I'm the guy who's gonna sit in the coffee shop and stare at the person at the next booth and pick up their tics, which can sometimes give me a whole character. Uh, I'm going to listen to any number of different kinds of pieces of music because that's going to feed something in me. Sometimes even giving me a rhythm, a rhythm of a walk or a rhythm of a a uh, way of speech that's different from my own, that sets something else going that makes all the other impulses just kind of start to take shape. So I use whatever is at my disposal, more so these days. Um, how's your process different as a director? Ah, it uses a different part of my brain, and I love doing that. Because you're figuring out the whole. Yeah. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, your mind is always on the totality of it, mm -hmm. and what I'm going to see sitting in that seat, and how, actually, I'm discovering this for the first time, thanks for the question, how I can sit there and watch and get that look on my face that my grandfather had by being transported. That's what I'm after. And if they don't transport me, they're not gonna transport them. What is the project that you've worked on that you felt was the most like a kid playing? <laughs> um, what comes to mind first and foremost is in television it would be two things. It would be Angel, which we worked on together, because I just go home laughing um, every night after work and saying to my wife, where else are you going to be in this town where you get paid to hear somebody yell over a loudspeaker, flaming vampires to the set, please, <laughs> flaming vampires to the set, please. It was just riotously fun and wonderful, and I love the scripts. Lost in television is very like playtime because it's like going to camp. You are out in the middle of the jungle. You're in the water. It's perfectly okay to be dirty. It's perfectly okay to be wet. Uh, you're in the rainforest. You don't need to worry about creating some kind of mythical place to be. You're going to fall over the tree root, and the cameraman's probably going to fall over it with you. You know, so you've got it all right there in front of you, and it, it's just like magic. Take flight shows Gary in a way that he hasn't been seen. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the biggest misconception about you? I would say a big misconception is because I'm a nice guy, which I really am. Uh, sometimes people might mistake that for um, my being a pushover 
or my being too easy mm -hmm. or too soft or whatever, which is not the case at all. So when something comes together for you as an artist, what does that feel like? It's the same feeling that I have sometimes when I sit down and play the piano. It's time is gone. Mm -hmm. There's no sense of time. And there's no sense of watching yourself. You are just there, you are doing it. Afterwards, people can talk to you and you may not remember much about what happened, but you feel exhilarated in a kind of way that is like singing at the Met, <laughs> you know, playing at Carnegie Hall, I don't know, whatever, but the feeling is one of such, uh, such a rush of, of exhilaration. We get a rare POV and take flight as Gary operates one of the cell cams, which we would never get from a traditional mm -hmm. camera. It's like being inside his head, seeing through his eyes. If I gave you a cell cam, what would we see? Um, let's see, you'd see like a, a gigantic apartment building full of windows, and in a whole bunch of them there would be these different characters that I played with me replaying some of the different things that I maybe wasn't quite satisfied with that I'd like to go back and do again. You'd see the director part of me orchestrating all of that and placing people in different parts of the window. You'd see uh, the father talking to my kids about something that had to do with growing up um, <clears throat> or dealing with my wife about one of those issues about them growing up. Um, it, it would be a very, very busy place. And it'd be a split screen, it'd have to be. No question. I have this film and it's about Gary Oldman, Jewish hip hop, and cell phones. How do you think I should market it? I think you just did. <laughs> <laughs> and I think everybody should see it. It's spectacular. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. It's a real labor of love, so. Yes, and it was a labor of love for me to watch it. I had such a big response to it. Thank you.